Okay, let's talk about some myths about dogs that you might actually think are true. Hey guys, I'm Jessica, the furry family coach, and in this video we're going to be talking about some of the top dog myths that I've been seeing on social media lately. So I've compiled a list to talk to you about, and who am I? I'm Jessica, like I said, the furry family coach, and I am a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. So I'm excited to bring these myths about dogs to you guys and help debunk them for you because I think at least with some of them, like a lot of people believe them. So let's talk about the very first myth. Okay, so the myths that I want to talk about in this video, I have just compiled a list of 12 over the last like week or so that I've seen on social media. So I wanted to just address these particular myths. So myth number one is that one human year equals seven dog years. This is just isn't completely accurate. There's a lot that goes into calculating a dog's age in relation to human years and equating one human year to seven dog years just isn't doesn't quite do it and i think it was purdue university who actually came out with a very complex mathematical equation to figure out exactly how old a dog would be in human years but what's the point i mean <laughs> we just want to make sure our dogs are as healthy as possible for as long as possible and give them the best quality of life that we can possibly give them i think that's the most important part that we need to be focusing on the next myth that i want to talk about is that there are hypoallergenic dog breeds this just is not the case guys there is no such thing as a hypoallergenic dog any dog has the potential to release what humans refer to as allergens. And yes, there are some dog breeds that may shed less, which leads to ultimately a reduction of dander being released because there's less shedding going on to actually carry that dander around. But every dog breed actually does have the potential to be an allergen or, or release what we know as allergens to humans. And so the idea that there is a dog breed out there that is hypoallergenic just isn't true. The next myth that I want to talk about is that dogs are colorblind. While dogs don't see the full array of color that we as humans do, they see more in blues and yellows and grays. So technically they are not colorblind. Another myth that I want to talk about is that we should shave dogs that are super fluffy or that have a lot of coat to them. And especially going into a summer season, which is when I'm recording this video, I want to let you know that that is not always going to be the best case scenario for your dog. Many dogs that have big fluffy coats have multiple coat layers. And while those coats may be designed to help protect them from the cold, if they are a breed that has, was derived from uh, colder climates, they also help protect them from heat and sun. So definitely discuss this with your veterinarian before you decide to shave all your dog's hair off because that fur may be protecting your dog from the heat and sun as well. And we don't want to do anything to harm our dogs. Another myth that I want to talk to you guys about is that dogs don't like being hugged. And while generally, like as a general rule of thumb as a dog trainer, I would say that it's never going to be a good idea to go up to a dog you don't know and hug them or to hug a dog that is giving you body language signals that say, I don't want you around me. I don't want you that close to me. I don't want you to touch me. Not all dogs hate being hugged. If you have a dog that is very affectionate and very loving and they are comfortable with you, then you know, pet them, cuddle with them, hug them. And if they are not giving you any body language to let you know that they don't like that, or if they are giving you body language to let you know that they are inviting that, then go ahead. But definitely don't just walk up to any dog you meet and start hugging them. Okay, the next myth I wanna talk about is that when a dog has a wagging tail, that they're happy. And again, as a dog trainer, this is not 100% the case. Every dog is different. Let me just get that out there. But there are some body language signs, cues that dogs give off that are pretty universal. And there are a lot of different tail wags. So if your dog is, you know, if, if think of a Labrador's tail and it's just happily wagging back and forth, that's the kind of happy-go-lucky wag that is, yes, telling you that your dog is happy. But there are other kinds of wags that tell different stories. So it's gonna be very important to learn your dog's body language. 
If you have a tail that's really straight up and erect and wagging really quick like this, your dog is not necessarily happy. They are very intent and focused on something and maybe a little bit agitated or anxious, maybe even a little bit nervous about something that may they feel may be getting ready to happen. Um, or if their tail is, you know, way down low and kind of gently like, I don't know, wagging, then no, they're not necessarily happy. Maybe they are very nervous. They don't know what's coming. Maybe they're a little bit afraid or a little bit timid. Maybe they are meeting somebody new for the first time and they just don't know what to expect and they may want to be happy, but really what they're telling you is that they're nervous and anxious. So not every tail wag says that your dog is happy, though when you do see a happy-go-lucky tail wag, then your dog is happy and that's something really wonderful to be happy in the moment with your dog. All right, the next myth I want to talk about is that human food is bad for dogs. And oh my goodness, guys, let me just tell you, first of all, what is human food? Now, a definition of human food may be different to different people. And if you are talking about heavily processed foods that are already prepared, maybe frozen in the grocery store or fast food from a restaurant, yeah those are not going to be great foods to feed your dog. However, if we're just in general talking about anything a human would eat, whether that's fruits, vegetables, meats, uh, any type of fresh whole foods, then no, that's not human food. That's food. That's food for every living being on the planet. I don't know what people think is in dog food, but it's definitely not something that comes from a distant planet somewhere that we can't find here on Earth. Feeding your dog a species-specific, biologically appropriate, balanced fresh food diet is going to be comprised of what some people may classify as human food because it is fresh meats and organ meats. Um, some bone, which generally people don't eat bone, so yeah, that's something different that a dog would eat that a human wouldn't eat. Um, sometimes vegetables and fruits, sometimes dairy products. So there are lots of different foods that some people may categorize as human food that are in fact exactly what your dog should be eating. However, again, let me just say, like I said at the beginning, if we're talking about heavily processed foods, prepared meals, yeah, that's not really good for your dog. And some things that you should always stay away from are like onions and chocolate. Those are definitely things that you don't want to be feeding your dog and they are toxic. However, the vast majority of food that we eat, that we as humans say is human food, I don't know where we get this from. This is like really egotistical on our parts as humans, guys, because Food on this planet is here for all living beings. It's not just here for human consumption. So I think we need to get away from this idea of human food and let's just talk about food as in general as it is here for the entire world and all living organisms on the planet to consume. And just by the way, if you are interested in what I was talking about, a biologically appropriate species specific balanced fresh food diet for your pet, check out the playlist on my channel. As my husband and I decided to transition to a raw food diet for our pets, we made a bunch of videos about things we learned along the way. So I would highly recommend you checking out that playlist and I will link it in the description below. All right, another myth I wanna talk about is that dog mouths, the, like the mouth of a dog and the saliva of a dog is somehow cleaner than human saliva. And I'm not really 100% sure where this myth came from, but um, what I can tell you is that the bacteria in a dog's mouth is abundant. Very similarly to the bacteria in a human mouth is abundant. What may, may be a little bit different is the types of bacteria in our mouth versus the types of bacteria in a dog mouth. And I recently heard a veterinarian kind of explain that a lot of the bacteria that reside in a dog's mouth is not necessarily zoonotic, meaning the type of bacteria that resides in a dog's mouth generally may not transfer to a human in a uh, disease-like way, in a way that's going to get you sick if they lick you. 
However, the saliva in a dog's mouth, if you do get bit, is dirty and does contain bacteria. So definitely if you get bit, you definitely want to seek medical treatment and make sure that you don't get any sort of infection and a bite wound. Um, so that may be like kind of where people are saying that a dog's mouth is cleaner than a human mouth because they can lick you and you're really not gonna get sick from that in general. Okay, this next myth I wanna say as a trainer, as a positive reinforcement trainer, drives me batty and I actually am going to talk about another myth that also drives me batty but for some reason people still think that if a dog has an accident in the home and you rub their nose in it that they're somehow going to learn a lesson and be potty like that is part of potty training and this could be this could not be further from the truth. I just want to say this loud and clear. I know I've said it before, but it does not help the situation. In fact, it is going to do so much harm to your dog's psyche. It's going to do so much harm to the relationship between you and your dog. You are going to see so, uh, so much negative behaviors from your dog further down the line for the rest of their life because you do this type of behavior. Do not punish your dog. Do not rub their nose in it. It is not going to get you anywhere with potty training. In fact, um, if you are struggling and if you have questions with potty training, check out the, the description of this video. I have a link to my group and I have a, a resource on potty training that I would highly recommend you check out. All right, guys, the next myth about dogs, and this one fortunately is starting to be peeled away, is that you need to be the alpha in your dog's life, especially in regards to training your dog. This again could not be further from the truth. I have a video uh, specifically about alpha training and why it is uh, wrong and how we know scientifically that it is wrong and how it's detrimental to the relationship that you have with your dog. So of course, as a trainer, I'm very, very passionate about this one. Um, so I will link to that video below in the description if you wanna hear more about it, but definitely that is completely wrong. The science behind it was flawed. The researchers have come out and said that the science was flawed, that they wish they had never done it, that they wish they had never published it because it has really set back um, the dog human relationship uh, a lot. And um, fortunately, there are people that understand this and know this, and there are a lot of positive reinforcement trainers, such as myself, who are out there trying to overcome this and say, no, you know, I, I realize that's what we believe, but it is no longer accurate. Here is why. This is what we should be doing. So definitely check out that video if you're interested more in why being the alpha in your dog's life is incorrect, wrong. Don't do it. <laughs> All right, guys, so the next myth about dogs that I see a lot, and people post this and don't even realize that they're posting it because there's a lot of like little videos and memes out there that people post and they think that dogs feel guilt. And this, in fact, we believe is not entirely true. So when you are looking at a dog and they give you that look of guilt, What's really happening is because your dog doesn't know what you're thinking about. You're thinking about something that happened in the past and dogs are not necessarily thinking of something that happened in the past. They're, they're thinking about what is happening right here and now in front of them. So what is not that they are feeling guilt for something that they have done in the past. What's actually happening is that your posturing and your body language, your tone of voice possibly is being your your dog is reacting to that in the moment and one thing dogs have been really really good at over the millennia that they have been living alongside humans is the um reading our body language dogs are amazing at reading our body language and understanding our emotional cues so when you are upset when you are posturing and you're giving body language that is saying, I'm really upset or I'm really disappointed, maybe your tone of voice is changing and you're yelling, your dog is reacting to you in the moment. And they know that 
They don't want you feeling the way you are currently feeling, right? So they have mastered what we call puppy dog eyes. And those, those puppy dog eyes, they melt us, right? And they, all of that, all of the negativity and all of the upset that we're feeling starts to fade away. And dogs have just become really, really good at reading our body language and social cues. So it appears because we as humans, uh, I'm going to use a big word here, anthropomorphize <laughs> different things. And we, we take our feelings and emotions as humans and throw them onto other beings and objects. We want them, we want to believe that they're feeling guilt for something that they did because as a human, you would expect another human to feel guilty. Dogs, however, are much more living in the moment and are reacting to your body language and your tone of voice right then and there. All right, guys, so the number one myth, number one myth, and I, I as a trainer, again, completely not true, guys. Myth, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Now, I have no idea where this started. This started many, 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 many years ago. People have been saying it for generations. And I'm sure that at some point, somewhere, somebody had a very stubborn dog who just was like, I'm old, I'm over it, I'm not listening to you. Maybe you're you know, using punishment, not using positive reinforcement, so I don't wanna to listen to you anyway. And that person said, you know what? This dog is too old, he isn't gonna learn anything. And that just kind of spread. And I have no idea if that's how it happened. I'm just saying, in my mind, that's how it happened. And it's not true. Any dog can learn. Every dog can learn. And it, what is true, what we do know, is that the older a dog gets, sometimes the longer it can take to learn something new, but that doesn't mean they can't learn. They absolutely can. So please, please, please stop spreading this myth because it's just not true. All right, guys, so that will do it for this video, 12 myths about dogs, some of which you might have believed prior to this video, and I hope I helped shed some light on these myths and you now realize that they are not true at all. So what I would love for you to do right now, first of all, give this video a thumbs up. Once you've done that, go ahead in the comments below and let me know which of these myths, maybe there were multiple, you thought were true prior to this video. I want to know. Let me know in the comments below because I really think some of these myths at least are really widespread and lots of people do think them. So go ahead and post in the comments below. Let me know which of these myths you previously believed and if none of them, if you didn't believe any of them prior to this video, that's awesome. Let me know that in the comments below too. And don't forget, don't forget, before you leave, click that subscribe button. Go ahead, click it, click, 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 click. Click the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. When you click the subscribe button, you're joining Pet Parent Nation. Yeah, you are. So join Pet Parent Nation. Click the subscribe button. When you do, a bell will pop up. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way, YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I really enjoyed making this video. So if you like this type of video, let me know in the comments so that I can make more just like this for you. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.